Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Over 500 years ago, about uh, maybe between 550 and 600 years ago now, the world was being radically changed by the introduction of mass-produced printed material. The German innovator Johannes Gutenberg had just invented movable type, or or at least had invented it in Europe. Uh, It may have been invented sometime earlier in the Far East. But he introduced movable type, which made it fast and and cheap and, and easy to print books and pamphlets and leaflets and all other kinds of printed material. That's an innovation that is one of the greatest breakthroughs in all of human history. It was a a major turning point in the entire history of our world and of the human race. It's quite possible that without Gutenberg's innovation of movable type and the printing press, that the Reformation, which was begun by Martin Luther and soon spread throughout all of Europe and, and the rest of the world, that the Reformation might not have had anywhere near the impact that it has had, and and perhaps might not even have had any impact at all, because so much of the influence of the Reformation was spread by the printing of of pamphlets and booklets and books, and especially the printing of the Bible, that people could, could purchase and could read for themselves to see what God's Word says about his love for them. Another major breakthrough in human history. More than 200 years ago, people were experiencing the Industrial Revolution as machines uh, began to to radically change the way that people lived and the way that things were produced and and could be produced in mass and and much easier and, and cheaper than they had been able to be produced before, mostly by hand. Just a little over 100 years ago, many people uh, were introduced for the first time to a radical new means of communication when Guglielmo Marconi invented the radio. And that, of course, has led to all of the the great breakthroughs in communication that we have experienced in in this past century. And now we're we're able to have lightning-fast communication to people on on the other side of the globe, uh, even with with video and audio, in just uh, split seconds of time. In, in, in live time interaction. Maybe some of you here today remember 53 years ago or so when the first men stepped out of a, a space lunar landing pod and set foot on the surface of the moon. What a, a wonderful breakthrough in human history and engineering and innovation that feat was. Well, there have certainly been many breakthroughs and and firsts that have happened throughout the course of human history. And those things continue to happen nearly every day in in the fields of science and technology and medicine and a host of other important fields that are are very critical for human flourishing and well-being. If there's one breakthrough in all of history that will always be the greatest, and that is why we are here today to celebrate and rejoice. And in fact, that's why we come together every Sunday of the year. But today we celebrate that breakthrough in a special way, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, from the dead. That is the ultimate first in all of human history, the greatest breakthrough of all time. On Friday, he was crucified. He died, he was buried in a tomb, And we know why he did that. It was our sins and the sins of the whole world that took him to the grave, to the the agony and suffering of the cross, being forsaken and abandoned, totally cut off from the love and blessing of his heavenly Father because of our sins that he was bearing. But then came the breakthrough of Easter morning, the transformation from death to life for our Lord Jesus Christ. That great act of his resurrection broke forever the grip of sin and death and and the grave over us and all people. It removed forever the sting of death. And it boldly announced for all time that Jesus' resurrection 
is the proof of his final victory over sin, death, and hell, and the power of the devil. That, indeed, is the greatest breakthrough of all time. Imagine how that must have been greeted by the people who saw Jesus after his resurrection. In our sermon reading for today, the Apostle Paul lists some of those people who could testify to this great event because they saw Jesus alive with their own eyes, and some of them even touched him. They, they saw and felt the nail marks in his hands and feet and, and the, the wound in his side from where they pierced his side with his spear after he died. What a fantastic feeling it must have been for those people. What a marvelous cause for celebration. Although for some of them, as we see in our reading, it, it, it took a while for that message, the truth of that message to sink in for them and, and for the impact and the meaning of that message to really hit home to them exactly all that that portended for their lives to come. We also celebrate Easter this morning because the greatest breakthrough of all time is a breakthrough for us as well. In our sermon text, the Apostle Paul, writing to those Christians in the Greek city of Corinth, uh, writes about all of the, the things that, that Jesus' victory over death has accomplished for them. He makes it clear that this is the most important thing that has ever happened. He says, this is of first importance what I write to you about Jesus' resurrection. He says in verses 3 to 4, I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. And certainly it's understandable that the Apostle Paul would feel so strongly about Jesus' resurrection. What else can even possibly compare with the glory and wonder and awe of Jesus rising from the dead? No other breakthrough in all of human history could possibly come close to that significance. And just as it was for Paul, the resurrection of Jesus also is the greatest breakthrough for us as well. We celebrate Jesus' resurrection today because for us, it also means life and eternal salvation. It means that nothing, absolutely nothing, not even death itself, can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, as the Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Romans in chapter 8. Jesus' resurrection was proof positive that the triune God has ultimate power and authority, even over something that seems to us so final and so absolute as death itself. Jesus' resurrection not only changed the, the entire course of human history, but it has also changed countless individual lives ever since. Because everyone who believes in Jesus, who trusts that his resurrection from the dead means that they also will rise from the dead, everyone who believes in that will share in the eternal victory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Do you believe that Jesus was born in Bethlehem about 2,000 years ago? Do you believe that he was raised as the adoptive son of a carpenter? That he preached and performed miracles? That he showed extraordinary compassion and mercy to the people of his day? Well, if you believe that, it's good that you believe that. But do you also believe in the Jesus of the cross and the Jesus of the empty tomb? That is the greatest belief. There are people who believe that Jesus did live on this earth, that he was a great teacher and an exemplary humanitarian and philanthropist, and they believe that he did die, that he died on the cross, period. And that's unfortunate because that really misses the most important and critical point. Yes, there are many good things that can be said about Jesus. There are many events in his life that are certainly worthy of our study and attention. But the most important thing about Jesus and his life is the event that we are here celebrating today. We can talk about his birth and celebrate it. We can remember the, the visitation of the shepherds and the, the wise men who came to see him soon after he was born. 
We can talk about Jesus' visit to the temple when he was 12 years old and, and speaking with such wisdom to the religious leaders of the Jewish people at that time. We can talk about his public ministry, his Sermon on the Mount, his miracles, his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. But if we don't talk about what really happened on Good Friday and Easter, then ultimately we have missed the point of all of it. The Apostle Paul called this message of Jesus' death and resurrection of first importance. It is really at the heart and center of the gospel, the the good news about Jesus, the heart and core of the Christian faith. Paul writes in verse 2 of our reading, You are also being saved by that gospel that was expressed in the words I preached to you, if you keep your hold on it, unless you believed in vain. Belief in the Christ of the cross and of the empty tomb is the most important belief that there is. The events of Jesus' death and his resurrection are the fulfillment of his mission as the Savior of the world. Jesus' resurrection proves to us that he was no ordinary human being. Jesus' resurrection proves to us that he is indeed the Christ, the Messiah, the the one that God had promised to send as the Savior of the whole world, that he himself is the very Son of God who took on human flesh and blood and soul and who earned salvation for us. Only Jesus, the true God-man, could have proclaimed his victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil by rising to life on that first Easter morning. We believe in this Jesus, crucified and risen from the dead. And that is the greatest belief of all time. The words of Job that that we sing, that we will sing at the end of our service this morning in that cherished Easter hymn, say it so well. I know that my Redeemer lives. What comfort this sweet sentence gives. He lives. He lives who once was dead. He lives my ever-living head. He is my living Lord and Savior. I know that he lives. And then these words from stanza two of that hymn. He lives triumphant from the grave. He lives eternally to save. Yes, he triumphed over the grave in order to save me. That is the greatest belief that there is. We stand humbly and and patiently at the foot of the cross, looking up at that dying figure who carries on his shoulders my sins and, and the sins of all people of the world. We confess our sins. We repent of them. We pledge allegiance to the Christ of the cross. And then the next thing we know, we're standing there at the empty tomb with the risen Christ who promises to us that since he lives, we also will live. What a blessing that is. It's a blessing that permeates everything that we are and everything that we do in our lives. It's not just a blessing in the abstract. It's not just an Easter blessing. It's not a blessing that's relegated to a neat little corner of our lives. It's not a blessing that's only associated with things that we do here in this building, here at church. It's not a blessing that we only will experience in the hereafter, after this life is over. No, it's a blessing that makes us who we are right now. It's a blessing that makes us brothers and sisters of our risen Savior, Jesus, and dearly loved sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. It's a blessing that affects everything we do and say and think in our lives having been redeemed by Christ crucified, and having experienced this breakthrough of Easter, we know what life here and now is really all about. Forgiveness, peace, joy, hope, faith, and love, and all of the other special blessings from our loving Lord and Savior are now ours. And those things make all the difference in our lives right now. Sadly, though, Many people don't think about the death and resurrection of Jesus as events that actually affect their lives. Even many people who believe in Jesus 
have not been able to make the connection between what he did so many years ago and their day-to-day lives in the here and now. The fact of the matter is that nothing has a greater continuing influence on the lives of believers than the death and resurrection of Jesus. Not only eternally, but also in our day-to-day lives as well. Listen again to what the Apostle Paul wrote in verse 10 of our reading. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not ineffective. Yes, that grace of God, the amazing love of God, that brought about the death and resurrection of Jesus and brought us to life and salvation is not ineffective. We are who we are by the grace of God. We love, we forgive, we worship and praise God, we help, we listen, we reach out to the hurting, and we tell the marvelous story of the death and resurrection of Jesus and what that means for all people. We do that because we know what's really important in this life. We know that these things, Jesus' death and his resurrection, are of first importance for all people, just as the Apostle Paul wrote in these verses. We know that Jesus' resurrection, that his victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil was indeed the greatest breakthrough of all time. We know that when the Holy Spirit works faith in our hearts, giving us the ability to believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we know that then we possess the greatest belief that anyone could ever have. And we know that all of this is the greatest of all blessings. Praise the Lord. Amen.